raise your kids the way you want to, and then when they become close to being adults, let them do what they want to do. So I've been thinking about that recently, which which is kind of an interesting thing because I don't even have kids. But I look at we now live in a world in time where social media drives and influences everything. And, and it goes even beyond that because that thought brings me to my next topic. It brings me to AI. It brings me to um, you know, artificial intelligence, which I've been so kind of eager to talk about. If you listen to the conversation I had with Young Blue, I talked a lot about artificial intelligence because what well, I, I think there's some great usage of it, but but I think there's a lot of fear too because you don't know what it could create. Um it, it's kind of an interesting time that that I'm watching this artificial intelligence shit happen. So AI, you know, obviously we know AI through the music stuff. Like like I just read they took down a Drake weekend AI song. Like they took it down. Let's see if we can find it. Is it hard on my sleeves? Let's see if we can find it. Here we go. I think this is it. Okay, let me just stop it here because I don't want to get any of the streams cut. Hey, this was my whole thing about AI. What happens when the AI gets better than the artists who are uninspired? Who, because they care about creativity and artistry, they have clammed up. They don't want to work with other people. So their creative process is the same that it's been for the last five, ten years. We're hearing the same sounds. They're not that creative. Obviously, not Drake and Weekend. They're so pretty creative. But what happens when the AI songs get better than their songs? Sorry to tell y'all. I've never heard a song before. It's the first time I'm playing it right now. This song's better than Search and Rescue. 100% by a mile. So what happens when an AI song created by fans or maybe created by a couple of writers or producers who have just cooked this up is better than the songs that Drake could, could, could produce? What happens then? What happens then? Are we here for the best art or do we suppress the art to protect the integrity of the artist? That's the interesting part of it. That's the interesting part of it. I, I've said that. I think that people are scared of this technology now in terms of music, but they will be eventually going to use it. You know why? I believe that what happens when, hey, if somebody goes to Pop Smoke's family and say, yo, you know, we found his rhyme book. He wanted to record these type of songs before he passed away. But we could still get his voice to do it. All we have to do is use AI. Is that a problem? Will you be mad? His family wanted to do that. What about Pooh Shiesty? He's just locked up. He probably want to record certain songs that he probably got ideas he record over a jail phone to his homies. Maybe there's a production company that could make that happen. Is that wrong? Why, why, why don't you use AI? Why don't you use AI for reference tracks? People make reference tracks. If music is about making the best art, why not utilize the technology rather than suppress it? What better way could we tell that you're a great writer or a great producer other than you making a full track with AI? Oh, shit. I just heard if I'm Drake and a writer comes with me with some rhymes, now I got to think about how you would sing it and I would sing it. Oh, shit, no, I already got your voice singing this shit. Maybe you could redo it or add ad-libs to your own AI. Also, here's the thing, and I mentioned this on the Young Blue episode. Drake is somebody, he's at every fucking front row seat at every basketball game. He's fucking 30 bitches. He got mad things, mad motion. You think he got time to really be cooking up lyrics and all that type of stuff? If AI could basically come up with ideas or people could present ideas with the use of AIs, isn't your album creation process even easier and quicker? You've worked with Quentin Miller to create some of the greatest works. What's wrong with that? I think this will be used, especially for posthumous or locked up artists. And I think it will be Refined over time. Now, 
I was going to wait for this, but I'll give the announcement now. Chat, what was going to happen pretty soon is that um, there's a producer. He said he made the, um, uh, which one was it? He said he made Ariana Grande controller. He wants to come on stream. He's going to show us how to do it. Y'all, Is that cool with y'all? The guy who made this is down to come on stream and show us all how to do it. Y'all down for it? I'll schedule with him. We could probably get him on next stream. He hit me up. He said, I, he's a producer too, by the way. But he knows how to use and manipulate AI. I'm rocking with it. Here's, here's what I believe with AI. So let me give my opinion on it. It's dangerous, but it's good. I think it's dangerous because I think certain artists are feeling that their works or their voice or what they believe is their sound could get, number one, whored out. Number two, could get manipulated to say things they didn't say, which is a problem. But number three, and this might be the biggest one, it's about ownership, right? If if the person who created that song with The Weeknd and Drake, if Drake didn't create it or didn't sing it, why, like, who owns it? Now, I personally believe that Drake and The Weeknd should own it. But here's the thing. These labels at this point are not set up to be going through a bunch of litigation with these things because, number one, I think a court would agree that if you're creating a song using a AI that's kind of using Drake's voice to re-record it or record it in whatever way, that should be Drake's creation or Drake should own a part of the copyright to it. However... Here's the thing. What happens when you have a song with multiple artists? It's Drake and The Weeknd, but it's neither of them. I mean, granted, Drake and The Weeknd, they're both on Republic, but they both have separate deals and separate situations within UMG. Whose song does it become? If you don't know how the music industry works, it's a lot on splits, right? How, what's the split on that? What's the publishing? How does that go? There's a lot to be figured out. Here's the thing, and I will say this to newer artists now. If you're going to sign a new contract, and I believe because the music business, trust me, they're usually slow, but they ain't that slow. Anybody who signed a contract, I would imagine as of this month going forward, it's going to say that the label owns your AI recordings in perpetuity and also probably has different splits if in certain circumstances they're forced to use it. And also I can imagine the label try to use leverage to say if you are unwilling to create music as per their instructions or otherwise they are allowed to drop music with your voice or your your lightning voice and likeness using ai that's going to be very scary so again this technology is so is super scary where like you don't know where it's going to go but that's kind of what it is. You know what I mean? So I said, ask for voice ownerships. Somebody said, you can copyright the tone of a voice. You're right. However, if the tone of a voice is made off of, remember, the AI is not a real thing. Like, that's the thing with art. Basically, I think they're going to just attribute it. If, if, if you use my voice, and I don't know if you guys know how AI works. It basically takes, it uses something as a foundation and creates almost a palette where it could create anything. If you use me as the foundation, I am the creator. Do you get what I mean? Because the AI software itself can't be the creator. And it's going to come to some litigation and say, well, whoever wrote that for Weekend and Drake, why don't they get like something? You know what I mean? Why don't they get... um you know, they should have some writer credits or whatever the case is. That's going to be very interesting if you ask me. So I said creative commons. Nah, you can tell it's not going to be seen as creative commons, like under a creative commons license, because you're already watching UMG blanketly pull down um, Eminem AI songs saying, yo, this song belongs to Eminem. Now, what's going to happen is that somebody who is 
a part of this AI program or a writer, they're going to have to take this to court and try to escalate it to say, well, fine, it is Drake's or it is The Weeknd's or it is whoever's voice is being used. But like in the creation of music and the process of creating music, I wrote it. So I'm owed or I should go through some arbitration for royalty points or I should go through having um, my... Uh, what do you call it again? Um, publishing. That's going to be a big thing. You know what I mean? Somebody said fair use. It can't be fair use when, uh, I get what you're trying to say with fair use. You're just trying to take a bunch of things and manipulate it. Um, nah, nah. That's, that's why the courts, hey, somebody's waiting right now to see that first court decision. And if you ask me, I think Universal because uh, I think these major labels, they're not going to have to bring it to court first because they have too much of a stake. They do too much business with YouTube, Spotify, this and third. So when they say take our shit down, a singular artist is not going to be able to tell Spotify, oh, no, that's actually not Drake. That's an AI kind of operating in Drake's vocal tone or whatever the case is. You know what they're going to say? Fuck you. We don't know you. We do business with these guys. We're taking it down. So somebody's going to have to sue, and they're going to have to sue these big record labels and probably put in some of these streaming services in their lawsuit and then go through the painstaking process of maybe a couple of years of getting that landmark decision. Once that landmark decision gets gets given, now you can start making some other things. Spillmaster, what's up with you, brother? I see you. Don't you worry. I see you, brother. 